Hey everybody, welcome to Mindful Social. This week I have Jenny Dietrich and you're so lucky to get to hear from Jenny because she is the amazing founder and CEO of Armand Dietrich, which is a digital marketing communications firm based out of Chicago. She's also author of Spin Sucks and Marketing in the Round and she co-hosts Inside PR. She does a whole bunch of other stuff and I'm going to let her tell you a little <laughs> bit about that because... I could go on for a really long time about how great Jenny is. I am so lucky because I get to hang out with you for an hour. <laughs> there we go. My, one of my favorite people. Um, you and I met, I think initially, like face, not face to face, but face to face as we, as we can do on digital with Steve Farnsworth. <laughs> yes. Oh many, many years ago. Many years ago. So. Yeah. Back when Steve and Adam and I were doing the- Yep. Yep. The podcast. Yep. Yeah. So it's have been to a while. Pick that up. We should pick that. We should do a, a reunion. That was one of my favorite hours I've ever spent for real. Oh, wow. I'll tell Steve. Yeah. Cool. Well, not because of him. <laughs> well, why don't you tell people a little bit? <laughs> why don't you tell people a little bit about what you're up to now and, and uh, what they need to know? What they need to know. Um, ha. Huh. Well, I just bought a new bike, and so I'm really kind of obsessed about that, but probably not so much about uh, work stuff. Um, <laughs> totally obsessed about it. Hired a new coach in January, and so I'm like all in right now. Um, but yes, I wrote Spin Sucks the book in 2014, which was the launch off of the blog, and so we're still, of course, keeping the blog going, um, which has been interesting in the last couple of years because I... I tell this story. I was at Social Media Marketing World in 2015, and um, my friend Danny Eine said to me, hey, I'm going to be in Chicago uh, for my mastermind group. We're meeting at, I can't remember which hotel, what's one of the hotels downtown. Um, can you come and spend lunch with us? And it was a Saturday, and I'd been in Social Media Marketing World all week, and I was tired, and I was, I'm an introvert, so I was tired of people, and I didn't want to talk to anybody. But it was one of those things where I was like, but it's Danny. Ugh. So I'll go. And I went and, you know, in the room are people like Adam Franklin from Australia, who I actually sat next to on the flight from San Diego to Chicago and he fell asleep and I have this great picture of him snoring. <laughs> and every time it pops up in my, right? Every time it pops up in my time hop, I, can, I giggle. I think it's funny. Anyway, Jeff Bullis was there. Sophie Lizard, like really, you know, big bloggers were in this room. And the whole point was for me to talk to them about how to use communications to expand their, their awareness and, you know, build, continue to build their brands and drive traffic and all that. So we're having this conversation and somebody says to me, well, how many spin sucks sub subscribers do you have? And I said, I don't, I think at the time it was, I don't know, 25 or 30,000. Let's say it's 30,000. Oh, I know, but you know, it's been 10 <laughs> years. So it's not like, yeah. you know, I just launched this blog yesterday. So, you Work know, for it. right. Um, and I remember Sophie Lizard said to me, and how much money are you making? And I was like, we're not making any money. And she said, what, what do you mean you're not making any money? And I said, well, it's just a blog. Like the business side is the PR firm. That's, you know, and it drives leads and all those kinds of things. And she said, so do you email them anything? And I said, well, blog posts. And she goes, so what? why would somebody subscribe? And I said, to read the blog. And there's like this audible gasp in the room. I remember it. And I kept thinking, what? I don't understand what is going on. <laughs> and it came down to it that she said to me, I will never forget these words as long as I live. She said, people subscribe. They give you their email address because they want to give you money. And I was like, what? <laughs> really? What? <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I'm a human being and I'm like, you know, everybody else. And I was like, well, no, you know, we tried this Spin Sucks Pro thing, this membership site in 2011 and it bombed. And so we talked through that and it ended up going from me just having a speaking slot at noon at lunchtime to me being there for five hours while they just like pounded me. And I mean, <laughs> the inquisition it was, and I left there and of course I'm exhausted and I haven't been home in a week and it's Saturday and I just started to cry. I was just like done. Right. But then I talked to Danny a week later and he said, I can help you. <clears throat> and he said, here are a couple of things I want you to try. I want you to try a mastermind group and I want you to try an online course. 
And again, I'm human. And I was like, well, I have to plan this. And I have to, he's like, just do it. <laughs> so that was March of 2015. I launched a mastermind group in April of, 15, of 2015 with three people. <laughs> and today I have two groups with 15 people. So I have 30 people total. Um, and we're trying all sorts of stuff now. Like, you know, we have a couple of online courses. We've just launched a, a premium Slack channel, which we call our PR dream team. Um, we just did a, we're launching in a couple of weeks, a survey that we did of the PR industry. And so we're, you know, we're getting there and it's all the catalyst. The catalyst was that conversation of Sophie Lizard saying to me, people give you their email address so they can buy something from you. Mm. Well, thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Sophie. Well, I, okay, but it isn't that simple because no, it's not that simple. I mean, no, you had done this before, and I full disclosure, we've both done this before mm -hmm. and failed. Mm -hmm. I failed mm -hmm. miserably. Right. I think Danny's amazing, but what's the difference? Well, for us, it was a couple of things. Number one, I really I saw a need in the industry. There was, a, there was, of course, marketing profs, but nothing specific to PR professionals. So mm -hmm. I saw a wide gap. And I also knew that this online education space was going to explode. So I saw a really big opportunity. And we thought we would build it and they would come. <laughs> not, not so much the case. And like it defies everything we would say to clients, right? I mean, you're not going to say to a client, yeah, build your membership site and people are going to give you money. Like that's just, just not up. how it, Yeah. We didn't do any marketing. We did no communication. Like, I think I blogged about it once. <laughs> if you don't Burn tell them, no one will come. <laughs> As it turns out, they don't know it's there. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that was a good lesson. So, uh, you know, I think it's really in the marketing piece of it. But I also think there's, and I'm not, I read Jeff Walker's launch, and I'm not a big fan of the way that some of the internet marketers that use that process communicate, but I'm a big fan of the process. Mm. And we have discovered that, you know, if there, if you have a process where you create a need for people to buy right now, they do because a lot of it's human psychology and you're working through, you know, how people think and what they do and how right. we act as human beings. And it's, it's different than traditional marketing. So it, some of it is for sure uncomfortable. And I think you're experiencing some of that as, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can tweak it to be your own, you know, and, and put it in your personality. You don't have to follow the exact, you can, I mean, you can tell, you can tell when you're on somebody's, you're on all these people's lists and they're all sharing each other's content, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're all doing affiliate stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but I think there are ways that you can do it and be really successful without having to fall, use the same copy and terminology. Yeah. Well, I, I think <clears throat> some of the things that have made a difference and you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of Danny's course at this moment and, right. and I'm really impressed with what he does. And I think one of the things that I hadn't been doing and God, is this classic marketer stuff where you're like, I know exactly what my market wants. I'm just going to shove it out there and they're going <laughs> to buy it. Well, that is not a mindful way to approach your market. It's not a nope. way to think about them. Nope. Even thinking nope. about them as targets is a pretty stupid idea. So right. can you talk to us a little bit about what your discovery process was and yeah. how you decided um, what people really wanted as opposed to maybe what you wanted to give them? And was there mm -hmm. a difference? <clears throat> yes, there's definitely a difference. Um, number one, I said, there's no way on earth somebody's going to pay $2,000 a month to sit in a mastermind with me. There's no way. And he was like, I, just try it. I would. But, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> he said, just try it. And I did. And three people bought it. And I was like, oh, well, <laughs> it's a heck of a lot easier and way more fun to do this. Yeah. Then to have a client pay you $6,000 a month, because at that rate, they think they own you. Right. And mm. they, you're at their, not to say that's bad because there certainly is the other side of the business that, you know, does that. But so <clears throat> I did that in, in immediately, right, right after that meeting. And then I sent a survey and it to our readers. And all it said was, if you could spend one hour with me, what would we talk about? And I got everything from, well, we, we would drink wine and eat cupcakes, which is great, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm down for that, <laughs> to really, really thoughtful responses. And it was a little overwhelming because I want to say we had 800 and some odd, I can't remember. I think it was 800 and some odd responses. So it was overwhelming and I didn't know how to 
do all that. So he gave me a formula where he said, <clears throat> um, if they've left longer responses, they clearly are more engaged. Mm -hmm. So you want to take the character count of all the responses, which you can just do in Excel. And then anybody that has a character count of, I can't even remember the number we use. Let's say a hundred or more goes into the top. And then I also said in the survey, if I have questions about your answer, may I call you? I'm not going to call 800 people. But <laughs> what I discovered was that if they left their phone number, they were even more engaged. Mm -hmm. So, you know, long response, phone number, those all floated to the top. And then I just reviewed the top 20%. And then the, th the bottom, and eventually we got to the other 80%, but the top 20% are what gave us the, the knowledge that we needed for our online course. And then we use the words verbatim in our marketing. Oh, see, I love that part of it too. You know, when you hear somebody say, you know, I just, I don't get how to use Twitter or Facebook ads totally yep. confuse me. Yep. Using that verbiage reflect it to them. It's, it's active listening, yep. right? Yeah. It's, it's, that's exactly what it is. And yeah. they go, Oh, she totally gets me. Yeah. Yeah. That that's a hard. real, real yeah. turning point. And yeah. I think, you know, even if we're not producing a class and we're creating marketing, I mean, you know, content is yep. our lives now. Yep. So how do we use that when we're going to create content, um, more effectively say we don't have a list. <clears throat> Uh, well, you have, a, you do have a list because you have clients or customers, right? So you ask them. Um, I have a really good friend. I love this example. He calls it his Home Depot survey where he'll send it to clients, to new client or to prospective clients. So anybody that he is in his pipeline, mm -hmm. he'll send this to and he does it once a quarter. And he, he asks one question, which is if you go to, if you want to build a deck, where do you fit in? Do you go to Home Depot? You choose everything you need to go home and you build it. B is you think you can do it. So you, you figure out the plans, you go to Home Depot, you get a little bit of help, you come home, you start to build it, but you really need a general contractor to come over every day or once a weekend to make sure you're doing it correctly mm -hmm. or C, you just hire it out. Mm -hmm. And he asks that it's, that's, and what's interesting is he finds that almost everybody falls into that B where they, they want to do it themselves, but they're not confident enough to be able to just go it alone. Mm -hmm. And so he's created, for lack of a better term, products for his service business that's DIY with some coaching. Mm -hmm. And it's just exploded for him because he has, a, he, again, he's done that active listening and he, and he sends that once a quarter to anybody who's in his pipeline. And that, of course, engages them too, because, right, it's not something that anybody else is doing. And yeah. it's, a, it's a service business. So he's... He's doing that. So I think there are lots of ways that you could use that. And then you're reflecting that back. I mean, we have a client that does locks and doors, mm -hmm. not a fun business, right? But once a quarter, they do the same thing. They survey, but they, they ask things like, you know, how do you use LinkedIn? Where are you on Facebook? Mm -hmm. And get that kind of information. And then they use it and they use, they use that information in their content development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think there are a lot of, I, in any industry, which is something that's really fascinating to me is to see, you know, when people say, oh, well, you know, our business, we don't need social media. Nobody's there. <laughs> They're not using it. You yes, know? they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they it's are. Just, not paying attention. Correct. <laughs> you know, and, and everybody has their favorite platform. And I find that all the time that, you know, we'll go in to consult with somebody and they'll go, okay, well, you know, we had this guy and, and he really said we needed to use Plurk. Do you know that Plurk is still alive? I had no idea. Still there. Plurk, in case you don't know what Plurk is, is kind of a weird version of Twitter that is very cute and sort of twisted and annoying. And I loved it when it came out, actually. But yeah, huh. it still lives. I had no idea. Shocking that somebody would actually sell that. You know, and it's really that... Okay, we all have our own favorite platforms or our own favorite methods or our own favorite verbiage for something. Sure. But, but <laughs> it's not the clients. Right. No, it's not right. the clients. Right. Right. So. Yeah, I'm big on just asking. And even if you don't want to send a survey, just ask. Mm -hmm. You know, what are your biggest challenges? How can yeah. we better service you? You know, 
how do you prefer to be to work with us? Do you like to be coached? Do you look like a little DIY? I mean, there's so many things you can do just over dinner. Yeah, yeah. So as a communications firm, do you have an onboarding process that's similar to that? Is we that do. <clears throat> yep, yep. And, you know, of course, we're continuing, continually uh, tweaking it. But one of the things we actually require of new clients is a two-day strategy session, mm. um, which is a little intense. Actually, that's not true. It's a lot intense. But <laughs> we, fit, it's true. we find that after about 3 o'clock, everybody's like, oh, my brain. Mm. Um, but we find that it's because you have that time together where people are focused and this is the only thing they're doing. It's very, very successful and get, allows us to get started really quickly. Mm. Where in the past, you know, you do like your kickoff call and not everybody's paying attention because they're, it's on the phone and they're checking their email and all this. With this, it's really, really focused. And then from there, depending on what they need and what their business objectives are, we can create the plan. But mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty much how we, and that's what we do is we sit in a room and we ask questions and we listen for two days. Wow. Yeah. I bet that's really intense. And I, it's I, intense. A lot of clients don't get that kind of attention. Right. So it must kind of blow them away to, yeah. to have that process. And to have somebody ask them questions that they either have been talking about internally, but haven't formalized or haven't talked about, or I've only had one situation in, I think we've been doing this for five years where the client, the CEO finally stood up and he said, I need to speak with you outside and pulled me outside. And he used the F word 62 times. Not that I counted on my fingers or anything. <laughs> um, but I discovered that, yeah, I was like, and it was freezing cold. And I'm in Chicago and it's winter and he has me outside without a coat on and he's using the F word. But as he's like screaming all this at me, I discovered that he, because he was the founder, he wasn't comfortable sharing that information with his team, which mm. is bad, but I was pulling all the, trying to pull all this stuff out of him that he was not, did not want his team to know. So <clears throat> there's that too. So I've learned to um, ask, <laughs> are the people in your, in the room that are going to be in the room, are you comfortable sharing this information? That's so I've learned to ask that before. Wow. Yeah, that's really important. And you know, I think that's something that is really fascinating to me, how, people are still living in silos. Oh, and yes. I want <laughs> silos to be dead, please. Me too. Yeah. Yes, me too. Because but it, yeah, they still do. Yeah. And I mean, it heck, I'm, any sense. Well, I'm guilty of it too, because you know, you, you're running around in 65,000 different directions and you're like, okay, we got to do this. And then all of a sudden you haven't communicated it, but you still expect people to read your minds. And as it turns out, they can't. <laughs> Who knew? Go. Um, yeah. So I, it's really about getting things out of your brain and creating process and, mm -hmm. and being to your point, being mindful, being, you know, present and paying attention. Yeah. At least be in the room. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's more difficult now. You guys work with a lot of virtual people on your team. Yeah. We're completely virtual. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so how do you deal with that? And not having having them end up in their own little individual silos in Oregon or wherever. <laughs> um, well, some days it's harder than others. Mm. <laughs> um, but we do a lot of Zoom chats, a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that as a communications expert, I will say to clients all the time is you have to get out of your office and walk around and see your team. And a, a lot of executives don't do that. So you have to really push them. And so I decided that even though we weren't in an office together, I needed to to work that philosophy. So it's kind of funny when a new person starts because I'll just, I'll just ping somebody and say, Hey, can you zoom for a second? And now people know that that's what I'm doing. I'm just getting up and walking around. But when a new person starts, they're like, Oh no. <laughs> I already got called into the office. Right. Which I kind of love. <laughs> You're evil. I know. I know. I know. Well, so let's switch then a little bit to employee engagement because it's very different with a company that, you know, has a static office, brick and mortar, everybody's, you know, cube hopping to talk to each other and maybe not, right. as opposed to virtual. So in both cases, employee engagement is much more important than it used to be, mm -hmm. at least in my opinion. What do you think I agree about with you. that? Um, I agree with you on that. And, and I think it's because uh, the millennials 
and this is a generalization, but millennials tend to job hop more. And so, you know, really keeping them engaged and feeling like they're pushing toward a building toward a bigger goal that is not just making the company money is really important. Right. Um, But I have found it's easier because you have to be mindful about it. You Mm -hmm. have to make a a concerted effort. You have to say, okay, today we have to do X. And where you're in an office, you know, you just assume that it sort of happens because you're seeing each other, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't. So I think it, I I find it easier just because you're so mindful of of saying, okay, you know, let's do our daily check-in and make sure that everybody's present and let's do, you know, where that didn't happen when we were in office. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it's easier. We're completely virtual. And so, you know, dealing with uh, people that are remote and maybe they're in different time zones right. is always an issue. But at yep. the same time, it's, it's really, um, I think it keeps us more focused. And we use, we use Slack. To yep. we use Slack yep. touch. Um, I think the tools are much better for us to be able to do that. You know, 20 years ago, oh my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even 10 years ago. Mm. It's definitely gotten easier. You know, it's funny. I talk about, I started the business 12 years ago and, you know, back then you had to have people in your office and you had to provide benefits and you had to have 401k for a small business to do those things and to hire the best people for the job, even if they're not, you know, in your headquarters city, then you have to move people there. Like for a small business to do that is extraordinarily expensive and it's really Mm. difficult to scale. But today you know, you have a BYOD, you bring your own devo- device and you have like, I mean, you know, you have yeah. everything in the cloud and you, people can be 1099s where they prefer that because they want to also do some freelance stuff on the side. And so you're not having to provide, you know, this, the same, you can, prov- what we do is we provide a stipend for benefits so they can mm-hmm. do whatever they want, right? If they decide not to get insurance, shame on them, but that's what they, you know, that's up to them. Um, I find it a lot, lot easier for a business to scale and operate today than it was even 10 years ago. Right. Yeah, I, I think it really is. And and it's also better for the employees. I mean, I for sure prefer to work <clears throat> remotely. And I can't say, you know, my my last guest <laughs> was also an introvert. And I have a feeling that those of us who are introverts love video because we can have this kind of separation. And, you know, I'm still in my cave. I'm surrounded yep. by all my yep. stuff. Yep. My cat's in the window. Life yep. is good. Yep. And it's hard for people to get used to that. And, and you look at people, you know, like what Yahoo, for example, it was right. like, okay, nobody can work from home anymore. Right. And it was because they felt like they were losing contact with the employees, or maybe it was because they didn't know what they were doing. Um, there's a lot of trust involved, right? There is a lot of trust involved, but you know, I've always been of the belief that if you treat people like grownups and let them do their jobs, they will. And certainly there are going to be some that take advantage. I mean, there have been dumb policies we've had to put in place because somebody took advantage of something, right? I mean, there's certainly those things that happen, but it's so rare that, you know, give a person a job, have them create their goals, and either they meet their goals or they don't. If they don't meet their goals, then they don't have a job. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just, it really is as simple as that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I I think it's... um... It, it's interesting to see who can do it well and who can't, because there are a lot of Correct. people who have tried and, and just yes. failed because they're, they like the culture yep. of having an yep. open office yep. and that um, camaraderie, I guess. Yep. <clears throat> oh, my husband's one. He worked from home for about nine months before he was like, and I'm out. And he, <laughs> he I mean, he moved his employees to Chicago and they have an office and mm. he goes there every day. I don't know how he does it because he sits in Chicago traffic every day mm. for an hour down and an hour back. I, I, I would go nuts, but it works for him. Yeah. So what other tools do you use that um, help you with productivity as far as, you know, are you doing everything in the cloud? We do do everything in the cloud. Um, we, so we use Slack as well for communication, just one-off stuff, mm. um, and Zoom for video. And then we use Basecamp for project management um, and Google Docs. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it helps to, to have that kind of, you know, university, universality. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does, it does. And anybody can use it. I mean, we have employees in Europe and they can, you know, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jenny, 
I Janet. can tell forever. <laughs> People were like, okay, that's good. We're when, we, when we had our, our prep call for this, we did talk forever. We did. And it's always a pleasure. But why don't you let people know where they can find you, where they can get the book, and how they can learn more about your Spin Sucks program. Spinsucks.com. Everything is there, and we actually do communicate it now. <clears throat> oh, my God. You tell people. <laughs> <laughs> Whoo. There you go. And also Twitter. Yeah, Spin Sucks is the easiest place because we've got everything. Okay. Everything's listed there, so you can find me easily. Somebody asked me for a business card the other day, and I looked at them like they were crazy. Business card? <laughs> Just go to spinsucks.com. You'll find me. Yeah, that's where domain names come in really handy. Yeah, exactly. Got a good domain name. Yep. All right. Yep. 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 Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you. And I really appreciate it. I always love talking to you. And just to let everybody know, this will be on uh, mindfulsocialmarketing.com on Tuesday, tomorrow. Tomorrow. It will also be on, we've just expanded our podcast. We are now on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, wow, Blueberry, and a couple other places that I don't remember right now. Holy so cow, we're, good for you. We're good everywhere. You. You're doing it. <laughs> You're doing it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Thanks again, ma'am. Thank and you. I'll talk to you again really soon. Okay. Thanks.